Hello, today we're going to talk about a technique to locate motor points for use with functional electrical stimulation when trying to elicit a specific muscle contraction. We can use basic anatomical landmarks to guide us to the general vicinity of a target muscle or tendon, but with some smaller muscles, especially those that are less superficial, it can be difficult to place our electrodes in the correct location to facilitate the desired motion. In this demonstration, we're attempting to provide stimulation to the FGS in order to facilitate finger flexion at the IP joint. This is a technique that can be used to help with differential tendon gliding, post-deflexor tendon repair. So we know that the FDP is located on the volar surface of the forearm. We could use palpation with attempted finger flexion to locate that muscle belly, and once we've located it, we can place our proximal electrode, our active electrode, over that muscle belly. And then we can place one distally, at least one pad width away from that proximal pad over the tendons to create a circuit. But what happens if this patient isn't able to recruit FDS and we're unable to palpate the muscle? When we turn on the stimulation, we may find that we're seeing wrist flexion or thumb flexion instead of that desired IP joint flexion we were hoping for. In this case, we can use a technique where we place ultrasound gel on the proximal pad. You can place it on the skin and turn on the stimulation. With the gel, we're able to move the pad around to try to locate that desired muscle mass by looking for that contraction. So here we're going to take a look, turn on the machine, slide around that active pad, and look for IP joint flexion. So as we zoom in here, you can see that now we are getting right over that FDS. So once we find it, we're going to go ahead and pause the machine, but keep an eye on where we had that electrode pad. And then we can go ahead and clean the gel from the skin and the electrode pad, replacing it in the area where we pinpointed our target muscle, in this case the flexor digitorum superficialis, and then we know we're going to get the desired motion. So once we've found this target muscle, it's important to combine NMES with functional movement. This is going to maximize the amount of cortical stimulation we're providing to achieve our goal of increasing strength and finger flexion. So in this example, we're going to give the patient a sponge to hold. While the machine is providing the stimulation, the patient is also going to attempt active finger flexion, specifically a flat fist position. During the active contraction, the patient's attempting the flat fist position and holding the sponge while, while receiving the stimulation. And during that rest period, the patient will rest the finger flexors to avoid excessive muscle fatigue. So this is really good for differential tendon glide. Now, for bigger muscles that are more easily palpated, like your extensors, we can use a motor point chart to place our active electrode. In this example, we're targeting the ECRB tendon to facilitate wrist extension. This could be used for a patient who might be recovering from a radial nerve palsy. We can also use the sponge in this example to grasp onto with wrist extension to attempt to strengthen that tenodesis grasp. So here, you're going to see when the simulation is provided via the machine, the patient's going to actively extend their wrist and, and in combination with active fisting, promoting that tenodesis response. And again, we're increasing the surface area of the cortical stimulation by having the patient recruit the muscles in addition to the machine providing the stimulation. I hope you found this video helpful and can apply it to your current practice. And here's a chart of some of those common motor landmarks of the upper extremity that I got offline that might be helpful for those larger muscles like you saw in the ECRB demonstration.